If you're looking for the ultimate easy mode, one bar build for the Elder Scrolls Online, where the majority of your damage and healing comes from just one button, then this is the build for you. Hey everybody, welcome back, HTM here, and in this video we're updating our God Mode Magicka Templar build for ESO. This build was already stupid easy, but I've added even more healing potential and armor to help you survive really difficult content while also keeping the rotation extremely simple. This build is going to be amazing for any solo content in the game, including soloing dungeons, world bosses, infinite archive, and solo arenas, and I can't wait to show you how it works. This is definitely a great update. First, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Everyone knows Raid for its insane champions and intense PvE and PvP tactical combat. But did you know that Raid is currently celebrating its fifth anniversary? With 5 million monthly active users and loads of epic free-to-play content, there's never been a better time to try Raid than right now. Whether you want to show off in PvP by fighting other players in real-time combat inside the live arena, or battle your way through the increasingly difficult PvE challenge that is the Cursed City, including 100 stages of action and unique double boss rounds, there's something for everyone in Raid. They even added a powerful new rarity of mythical champions to the game recently that can use metamorph skills to transform between two different forms, and these are just a few of the many fantastic features in Raid Shadow Legends, but to continue the celebration with Raid's 5-year anniversary, new players can click my link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen to get $100 worth of prizes, plus epic boss killer Lady Atessa and all of these exclusive 5th year anniversary awards after reaching level 25. So don't miss this limited opportunity to join in the festivities, hit my link in the description or the pinned comment down below to get started, and thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Alright everybody, here we are back on the Magicka Templar solo one bar god mode build, and it is time for an update. Uh, as I talked about in the intro, this is going to be probably the most powerful version of the build, especially if you're looking for a lot of self-healing and survivability. It's a lot easier to play than previous versions. Uh, but I'll talk about how it has changed in this video. So let's go ahead and start by just buffing up and checking out the buffed stats. We are looking at about 30k max magicka, 24, 25k, let's say, max health, 14k max stamina. Very good recoveries there, as you can see. And I forgot a buff for... Spell damage, you do want that on the Magicka Templar, you get extra spell damage, 4,700, about 50% spell crit chance, which is really good, and very good resistances overall as well. Again, we're going for more of a survivability focus on this build, which is really nice. 64 points on into Max Magicka, obviously we are the Magicka Templar. In terms of the Mundus Stone, let me scroll past all my buffs here, we're using the Thief Mundus that extra crit chance that's very important on the Templar, especially because you have bonuses to crit damage. You want to maximize that as much as possible. In terms of our consumables, we've got the Clockwork Citrus Filet. This would be ideal just for that little bit of extra stats. It does give you an extra line of health recovery. Totally not required though. You could easily make this work with something like Witch Mother's Potent Brew. That's totally fine. Uh, for potions, I picked up some Tri-Stat potions. This is going to be ideal just for those extra recoveries. Uh, if you can afford it, if not, then the basic Magicka Potion. It's going to be totally fine as well. And then in terms of the race here, I did switch this over to Khajiit this patch. I feel like Khajiit is in a pretty good place in terms of solo gameplay. Something that's helpful on Khajiit is robustness. This gives you about 100 extra health Magicka and stamina recovery. We have different ways of buffing that, um, especially on the Templar, which is going to result in even more recovery. You get the uh, max stats here, health, Magicka, and stamina, which of course is nice. And then the crit damage and crit uh, healing bonuses. This shows up a lot on the Templar because we have so much healing coming in. Once it crits, it basically uh, is doubled in terms of the healing potential because we have so much critical damage on this particular build. So I do like that. Uh, of course, you can use other Magicka races, High Elf, Dark Elf, even Breton, if you want a little bit of extra sustain. Point is, whatever race you have access to, you can make it work on this build. All right, that is the basic setup. Let's talk about the gear next. Now, let's start with the key. Obviously, this being a one-bar build, I did prioritize using the Oaken Soul Ring. Got this with the uh, Spell Damage Enchant Bloodthirsty transmuted as the trait. Why is this so good? Well, obviously, it gives you tons of buffs 
uh, that would be uh, difficult to get on a one bar build. Otherwise, things like major brutality and sorcery for damage, major prophecy and savagery for crit chance. Minor force is very nice to have minor protection. We get our major resolve armor buff, buffs to recovery, minor heroism, minor slayer, minor ages. This thing just really has it all. So I do recommend you pick this up if you're interested in the easy one bar playstyle. Now, this is not a heavy attack build primarily. We are focused on the Templar skills, but it also gives you the empower buffs, makes your heavy attacks much more powerful. And if you don't have this yet, I will have a guide linked down below in the description, so make sure you check that out. Now, no surprise here, the second set on the Magicka Templar is going to be Deadly Strike. Uh, this gives you some very nice weapon spell damage bonuses plus crit chance and increases the damage of your dots and channeled attacks by 15%. This, of course, buffs the main damage source on Templar, which is Puncturing Sweep. If you know that ability, you also know that it heals you back. And so the more damage you do, the more healing you get. So Deadly Strike just makes a lot of sense on this particular build. Now, yes, I know it's a PvP set, but I've tried to identify sort of the easiest pieces if you were to buy them on Guild Traders. So we're not even using weapons this patch. We're just using two pieces of jewelry. So we got the Deadly Necklace and the Deadly Ring. And then three pieces of deadly on the body. So deadly boots, the legs, and then the chest piece. Now obviously, you want to put max magica glyphs on this. And then uh, divines for all of your body pieces if you can. Okay, so so far, nothing has really changed. But if you noticed uh, in the uh, stats, I did have a monster set that was proccing. So I decided to put on Chokethorn on the Magicka Templar just for that little bit of extra healing. And this thing works like crazy. Uh, you can see for the two-piece bonus here, when you use a heal ability, you have a chance of proccing the Strangler. This gives you almost a 20k heal over six seconds, which is absolutely huge. It's one of the best healing monster sets in the game, and this is a base game set, so it's pretty easy to pick up. Now, the cool thing about Templar, especially Magicka Templar, is your sweep will proc this. Um, anytime you're doing damage, you basically will be proccing the Strangler, so you have this insane uptime on this massive heal. Now, I also really like the fact that you get a one line of Magicka Recovery. Sustain can be a little bit challenging on the Templar when you're spamming those sweeps, so this actually does make a big difference in my testing. But yeah, this just feels really good, and it makes the build so much more tanky. And so just basically, you can stand in the red and uh, take damage because you're going to have so much healing over time coming in. So I'm actually running this as a heavy armor set for the extra armor. I'm also running all three armor weights. That's going to help with undaunted passive. So we got the heavy chokethorn helmet, heavy shoulders, uh, and I did put one health glyph there. You can use max magicka. It's fine. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, you have a five piece, you have a monster set, you have a mythic for the one bar build. So what are you doing with the rest? And I decided to make things easy. I'm just going to run four pieces uh, for the other set. So I'm not using a full second five piece. I'm using four pieces of Mother Sorrow. That's going to give me one Max Magicka line, two lines of crit chance, uh, very effective. Obviously, we got over 50% crit chance on this build still, even without the five-piece bonus. And the extra Max Magicka, I think, is important. Uh, this makes Chokethorn do more healing. It also gets us over that 30k mark for Max Magicka especially using three bloodthirsty traits. That's not easy to do. So yeah, we've got the precise Mother Sorrow Lightning Staff. Lightning Staff is going to be important. That does increase the damage of your channeled effects as well. Perfect for the Templar, honestly. We've got the Absorb Magic Enchant with the precise trait for even more crit chance. So remember, this is a two-ended weapon, so that's two pieces. And then we've got... The third piece on the waist, Mother Sorrow Waist, and then Mother Sorrow Gloves. That'll make up your total four pieces there. So once again, just to overview, that setup is Okenso Ring Mythic. We've got five pieces of Deadly Strike, four pieces of Mother Sorrow, and then the Chokethorn Monster Set. This is going to be our survivability slash healing setup. Now, if you want more damage, the original version of this build works completely fine. I'll have that listed in the written guide check the uh, link down below for that one but that's basically oaken soul with deadly strike and you could do either mother sorrow or orders wrath as your second five piece set with one piece of slime cross since you won't be running the full monster set in that case all right we talked about the set options let's look at abilities next starting with our first templar skill solar barrage this comes from dawn's wrath uh, this does nice aoe damage around you this has a nice long duration of 22 seconds 
But the uh, reason that you want to use this is not even on the tooltip. It's because of this Templar passive right here called Illuminate. When you cast a Dawn's Wrath ability, you get minor sorcery for 20 seconds, increasing your spell damage by 10%. So even if you don't use this particular skill, you want to use a skill from this skill line just for that passive. You can also use Living Dark for the heal. Uh, if you're focused on like a single target boss only, you could put Radiant Glory for the execute or Vampire's Bane for the single target dot. Bottom line is you do want a skill from this skill line for that passive. Next up, we've got a flex spot. Currently, I'm using Radiant Ward for the damage shield. Uh, I do like this for bosses that have a lot of adds because each enemy hits uh, when you proc this shield increases the shield size by 20%. It also has a fairly low cost. Uh, under 4,000 Magicka for a damage shield is actually pretty good. I don't have five light pieces of light armor, so I can't run the light armor shield, uh, but I can run this skill and it is very effective. Now, what else could you do? Uh, well, you could run more damage here. You could run something like Blazing Spear for an AoE dot. You could run another very powerful AoE dot with a huge uh, radius. Ritual of Retribution is very nice as well. So if you're playing with a healer or if you're just doing easier content where you're not uh, too worried about needing a shield, definitely slot something here for more damage. Again, Blazing Spear, Ritual would be the best options in that case. Third ability, we're looking at a Destruction Staff skill called Elemental Drain. This applies Major Breach, so this is perfect for bosses. It's going to reduce their armor by about 6k, but also give us Minor Magicka Steel, so that's a nice bonus to incoming Magicka Recovery. Templars don't have a lot of options in, turn of, in terms of sustaining their Magicka pool, so this is really nice. You will notice a difference, so I do recommend that, and the 60 second duration, really nice as well. But of course, that leads us to our main DPS skill, that is Puncturing Sweep. So this deals magic damage in front of us applies a snare, and you heal for 36% of the damage done with this ability. So this is your bread and butter on the god mode setup. You're just going to be spamming this as much as possible. You're doing damage, you're healing at the same time. You also have the chance to proc that uh, healing monster set. So yeah, pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, and then finally, channeled focus comes from restoring light. Now this is mostly for sustain. We don't need the armor buff. Remember that comes on the Oaken Soul ring by default. If you're not running Oaken Soul, then this is even better. Uh, but look at the recovery that you get. About 250 Magicka every one second. That's equivalent to almost 500 Magicka recovery on your stat sheet. It does not show up on the stats, but this is super effective uh, in terms of just letting you do sweeps all day. If you don't have this, you're going to have trouble with sustain. Uh, but also the healing is nice if you're standing in that rune. It is more effective. So about 1,600 base heal, almost 3,000 crit heal, and it does heal you every second. Can proc your choke thorn too, uh, by the way. So yeah, it is uh, definitely recommended that you pick that up. And then finally, our ultimate here from the Destruction Staff. Went with Elemental Rage. This is just probably the best damage ultimate you could use right now for consistent AoE damage. If you want to do something that's a bit more of the Templar feel, then definitely I would use Nova. Morph that to Solar Disturbance for a solo build because it's going to give you a nice long duration of Major Maim. That's reducing the uh, damage that enemies do by 10%. Does the setup, again, all the alternate skills, all the passive skills, those are going to be listed in the written guide. Link for that's down below if you want more information. So in terms of rotation, we'll do a quick world boss test here. If you want to do this yourself, I'm actually in the zone of Rivenspire. This is Mainier Stone Skin, a very good test of your build for uh, playing solo. So we're gonna start with the debuff here and then put down our armor, put down solar barrage, and then we should be able just to stand in our circle and then take damage because we have so much healing that it's not even gonna be an issue. You can see I'm just gonna maintain my uh, heal here. I'm gonna maintain solar barrage can use the shield here if you want just to let your healing catch up a little bit it's going to be especially useful when choke thorn is is on cooldown pop that shield use my potion here too off balance so i'll get a nice heavy attack stun on that guy all right so that's the first wave of ads pretty easy I'll bring the boss over here a bit make sure we maintain our buffs i'm going to refresh elemental drain on the boss Keep that going. 
Ooh, got stunned there. Let me drop the alt here and the shield. This is a little bit more difficult now. We've got three adds coming in. Okay, finish off these. Stay in your circle. Use the shield. All right, I want to get a couple down here before I kill the healer, just because there's too much. Okay, let's focus on the healer now. Interrupt that. And rebuff. Try to keep things close and grouped together if you can. That definitely helps with the Templar, because then you can just damage everything. All right, so we had the waves kind of stacking up there. But definitely very easy on this build. And we'll just burn off the ultimate, because why not? All right, let's check out champion points next, starting in the green tree. As usual, you'll be able to find these champion point breakdowns in the written guide for 300, 600, 900, and 1200 CP. So check out that link after you watch this. There's definitely something there uh, that can help you out. But in terms of the green tree, slot the stars, always start with Steed's Blessing, and then I'll pick up Treasure Hunter, followed by Rationer and Liquid Efficiency. In the blue tree, typically you want to start with Biting Aura and Mastered Arms. These specifically are going to buff your sweep damage. Remember that equals more healing. After that, you can add in Fighting Finesse for some more crit damage, 8% critical damage and critical healing. That works really well on this build. And then we went with Wrathful Strikes just for some more offensive potential as our final slotted star. In the red tree, pretty basic setup. We've got Rejuvenation for the Recovery, Fortified for the Extra Armor, Boundless Vitality for the Health, and then the fourth star, Siphoning Spells, a little bit of extra Magicka sustained when you kill enemies. Uh, but that is it for Champion Points, very basic setup. And then if you're curious about the outfit style, we could check that out as well. This is called Nibbani's Court Wizard. Hey everybody, thanks again for watching. If you need more help on this build or have suggestions, make sure to leave a comment down below. Don't forget we have a full written guide over at HackTheMinotaur.com where I post the full build plus the more damage focused version using Order's Wrath. And if you found today's video helpful, do me a favor and crush that like button so YouTube knows to share this video with others. And if you want to support the channel even further, then check out our YouTube membership. The Elite Squad, which is our tier 2 channel membership, gets access to dozens of extra members only videos like a recently updated Death Knight Stamina Necromancer build, which is another amazing solo option and is nearly unkillable. Big shout out to our channel members, as always, who keep this channel going. I could not do it without you. And thanks again to all of you for watching this video. But I hope you're doing well, stay safe out there, and I will see you around in the next video.